What's up everybody, welcome back to another drawing tutorial. So today we are going to be drawing Shigaraki Tomura from his fight with Redestro, or Derestro, no, Redestro, yeah. Um, I think that's what that, the enemy's called anyway. But uh, it's kind of a cool, one of those cool moments where he sort of awakens his power and he like crushes, I think he crushes one of the hands. Was it the hand or was it a rock? I can't remember. I don't know. I think it was one of his hands that he wears. He like crushes it in his hand. There's all this dust and stuff. But it looks pretty good anyway. So we'll have a go drawing it. Landscape orientation paper. Use pencil and eraser for these. Definitely. Sketch it out lightly, you know, so you can erase things easily. And uh, and uh, try have fun. And then if you want, you can do black ink over a pencil. I, that's the best way to do things, I think. Um, okay, so let's go. Center point of my page is about here. I'd say that's where his mouth might end up being. We go up, over to the right, and we're just gonna do his eyes. So we go diagonal line, up like so, and then across. Now, some of his eyes will end up going underneath hair, so don't worry too much if you end up cutting some of his eyes off with hair. And you can like thicken up the top eyelid a little bit. Right, so then this will go diagonal back like so, and then back in towards the front. And then his iris, small circle here with a dot in the middle, like so. So the other eye, just over here, it's a bigger eye, right? So it's like this one's squinting and this one is like wider open. And the eyes are quite close together now in relation to their size. So it's probably like half an eye width between the two eyes or three quarters maybe. Just like the eyes in My Hero Academia are always bigger. So it's probably like you could probably fit half of his eye in between. And then we curve this line over. And then we bring this one down and across. Again, you can sort of thicken up. Eyelid lines. And then his iris down near the bottom of his eye because he's looking at his hand, which is sort of down here, right? So he's got this real sort of crazy look. So one big eye, one small eye. So he's got like scars around his eyes and stuff. Um, so like there's like a scar here. And there's all that wrinkly sort of skin scratch lines around his eyes too. But we'll just draw the sort of scar first. So then his nose, so we've got some nostrils here. And then in My Hero Academia, sometimes you can have these lines coming across the top of the nose and he does have them this time. Sort of lines like that along the nose. So his mouth, so he's got a real evil grin and it's kind of like a bumpy smile, right? Like so. And then the bottom portion, so we go in like this first, and then we'll bring it down around the bottom of his teeth there. And speaking of teeth, so then in the middle, so we got these two. Like that, we can actually see teeth drawn in, right? So. We'll go across. Like so. And then some lines coming down. Bottom 
this. And then he's got like all these wrinkles sort of coming up his lips. And... and down the bottom lip as well. He also has a scar on his lip. So, and he has a freckle, I think, on his face, doesn't he? It's like here. Right, so then his chin and the shape for his face. He's got a round enough chin, round enough shape for his face, right? Like that. And if you're checking your proportions of things now, so eyes to the nose is about the same as the nose to the chin, right? So eyes to the nostrils, so the bottom of the nose. That's about the same distance as nose to chin. And then nose to the bottom lip line is about the same as bottom lip line to chin. Okay, that's roughly our proportions for his face. And then we bring his jaw up the side. And go up the other side there. And then we bring it up towards his hair. Up to here. And you kind of stop lower than his eyes because his hair starts here so speaking of hair let's go right so we've got like a big long one that comes down across his face here and remember now hair moves it blows in the wind so don't worry if yours isn't exactly like mine once you just get the general shapes you know you'll get most of the effect This comes up this way. Do, 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 do. So that's the fringe that comes down across the front of his face, and then we have some that comes across the sides. Comes down like so. Some of this will go underneath his collar. So that one goes that way. Right, and then we'll do, so he's got like big ripped collar and stuff over here, so we'll do just the hair on the other side first. And then we'll try and deal with that collar, so it comes down this way. Back up. Into there. Comes down in, like so. To there. Right, and then he has all those scratch marks on around his eyes, right? So it's like, you know, his his eyelid line. And then like lots of these wrinkles and things. And then scratch marks and stuff on his face because he's been fighting.
like so. Okay, so rest of his hair and his collar. So let's see, right, so we got um, some like hair and collar. I guess we gotta do the collar first. So this like ripped sort of collar comes down. All the way, so it's gonna go all the way down towards his hand. Down to there, and then over this way. So some hair goes underneath that. And then it's like all these jaggedy sort of lines. Hole ripped in this there. And then so we can see some hair coming out there. And then some more hair spikes coming up here, down to there. This way, like so. Right, so he's got all this hair sort of blowing in the wind, right? So let's just go for it. So we're going to go up. Around. This goes up around, bumps around top of his head. Down like so, and this will have some hairlines parting here. And this goes down that way. And then similar sort of hair stuff coming down this side. Just add some texture here. Like so, and then more long pieces of hair sticking out here. So, again, so we have, so we've got like ripped collar. So, there, and then some hair that comes out from behind us here. Some more in underneath here. Back. Just underneath his ear. And the ear is here. Can we see his ear on the other side? A little bit. Just there. So his hair is pretty complicated. So take your time. It's a bit trickier than I thought. It's because the cloak, you know, you've got to get it underneath the cloak and stuff. So this comes up to there. Like so, and then another one there, another hair spike. Sticking up 
this way. Into there. And then some more. Okay. Um, more cloak then, ripped. Goes around the back of his head. that and then there seems to be the shadow of the cloak going that way so it's all like dark black in here and then maybe like some of his trapezius muscle i think is there just underneath his ear and then there's more hair sticking down here and then a dark section of his cloak somewhere underneath this hair say like here so this is like black inside black inside there as well and then the black section of his cloak goes around the back to there right so we got to do this hand right here, takes up, it's about as big as his whole head, basically, right? And we've got four knuckles, right? So we go one, two, three, you get progressively smaller, four. And this comes down for his hand, right? So this big finger here comes down like so. Then we've got like a knuckle. There, and then this finger goes down again. Another knuckle line here. And then ring finger, knuckle line goes down like so. You can have knuckle lines on top. That and then we can see his thumb on this side. So it curves over, comes out, down like so. And then the back of the hand will go in. So there, this comes down. And then we got some lines underneath for the thumb. there and just thumbnail to there and he's got like all these scratch marks and hatching lines and things all over his hand right so the back of the hand comes down and just goes off towards his wrist off the bottom of my page and his wrist here and his forearm comes down back into there somewhere and so you'll have hatching if you want of course it's optional don't have to do the hatching like so That, right, so that's basically his hand. So it's a pretty complicated shape, I know. So pause it there if you need to. Right, so then we can see neck muscles and things inside here, right? So we've got like a neck muscle coming down this way, a neck muscle coming down here, and in between we have a dark shadow underneath his chin.
like so. Hatching is there, and then neck muscle sort of coming down from his jaw here. Neck muscle coming down from his jaw there. And then we have collarbone. And another collarbone here. And some more sort of neck lines that way. And like some hatching for the other neck muscles going this way. Maybe like his trapezius. Just that way somewhere. Right, so we gotta join this fist up to the rest of his body, okay? So we got a bicep here. And then a tricep on this side. Goes up like so. And maybe another like skin bump sort of line here. And a bicep line there. And there seems to be some hatching on it. Some hatching and scratch marks and stuff on the bicep as well. And then his shoulder is merely defined by ripped and torn stuff, fabric. So it's like all these spiky sort of lines. You can do this kind of any way you want. There's no sort of hard and fast rule. You just gotta make it look kind of tattered and Down to there, another one up here. And then shoulder line. And shoulder line in there. And then we got like a shadow portion. Like so, and then some more of his cloak and stuff, so going that way and it's like flowing out behind him as well so we've got like going off the page that way maybe comes back in every now and then like so and then the other side, so the shoulder again. So this shoulder just goes straight down, so it's a bit easier. This kind of sticks out. That goes down. And then so I think more torn parts coming out from his hands, so here. Like so, and then his body. Down like so. To there. Down like that. His arm coming out of his shoulder here, and some more torn parts like so and then this comes up use his arm here and some lines just for the side of his body then like that and some of the cloak that come from behind his body that we can see just random sort of shapes like this There, and then if you want, right, so there's all rubble, okay, sort of floating out. It's like a slow-mo shot, so if you draw over anything, <clears throat> you know, you can use your pencil or your eraser just to draw them off. So you just draw these sort of boxes like this, and there's lots of sort of, there's bigger pieces, of course, there's like, and they're like all different shapes and triangle sort of things like this floating all around. They're like hatching on them. 
and I'll try to keep them in spaces where we don't have to do much erasing, but you know, eventually you will go over some of his clothing lines and things. You know, like that kind of stuff. And then there, and then there's like gonna to have to go over some of them there's, I don't think there's any way of avoiding that if you need to erase when you're coloring these gray you know you can just color them gray do, 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 do. Big one here. This one actually, so it covers a lot, a good bit of his hair. So this one, like on this side, it's quite large. So it's hard to make that one out, but. When it's colored, you'll see it. And there's lots of these dust and things flying in the air. And as well.
hatching on us. Right, but I think this is as much as I'm going to do. You could keep building this up, adding more dust and small sort of disintegrated particles of stuff. For as long as you want, but I think I'll leave it there. That's how to draw Shigaraki Tomura. Hope it's helpful, guys. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.